I'm Joe Spellacy, and I'm going to be your host here for the 52nd annual meeting of Catholic Social Services. And I know what you're thinking. Bloody hell, can I not go to one me Catholic meal in this town without hearing a Spellacy or a Fian? <laughs> the truth is, no, you can't. Short answer. If you did go to a Catholic or a meeting of, of, of that sort of ilk, you're probably, probably at a Protestant lunch, and it's not going to be as good a food anyway. You may have noticed the video cameras here. There's some at the back, front, high-tech lighting. We're all mic'd up and everything, and that's because uh, Catholic Social Services is really committed to coming into the 21st, being connected with its community, and that means that this um, uh, is being videotaped. It's going to be broadcast on the internet. We are also, for the first time, live tweeting from this event today. So uh, it, it is going to be a, a new first in a couple of different ways for Catholic Social Services. If you look on your agenda card, you'll actually see the Twitter handle for, tonight's, uh, event, or for today's event. And it is hashtag, or as I like to call it, number sign, <laughs> CSSAM2014. And, and I've got to confess, I'm no computer expert or geek, but I think this internet thing is going to kind of stick around for a while, so it's pretty good. Can you imagine if Jesus had had a Twitter account back in the days in Jerusalem? It would have had a whole different look on the thing. Half the population would have already been converted because they would have had that prayer position down pat. Head down, legs in front of them. The parables would have been a little different because I think something like, for instance, the multiplying of the loaves and fish Instead of them uh, uh, seeing him in a prayer for a miracle, he would have been accused of just texting the baker and a fishmonger down in the market to bring up some takeout. But in keeping with the advances in social media, our next guest invites us all to tweet him our confessions, at least during the golf season. His handle, of course, will be hashtag Mike number four gives. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, here to say the grace, the Archbishop's representative on the boards of Catholic Social Services and Catholic Charities, Father Michael McCaffrey. Thank you, Joe, for that nice introduction. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh, loving God, we ask your blessing on this 52nd annual Catholic Social Services Luncheon. Bless all those people that Catholic Social Services serves, for those who serve, and for those especially who give their support, many gathered here today, uh, for this great ministry. And God, even though he doesn't need your help, uh, bless our guest speaker. Guest speaker. And uh, also, before I forget, bless our luncheon and our fellowship. Amen. amen. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. I think I forgot half my grace, but that's all right. <laughs> As always, thank you very much, Father Mike. I would ask you all now to please start your meals, get into your salads. We're going to try and keep this running on time. Laura Kugler is here now taking the place of our good colleague and friend and Sergeant at Arms, Mark Barlow, who many of you know. Uh, uh, suffered a heart attack earlier. Uh, he's at home now convalescing under the good care of his wife Susan. Like many of you, I was shocked to hear that he had sustained a third heart attack. I couldn't believe he had only had three. <laughs> but he is such an integral part of Catholic Social Services. We all hope and pray for a full and speedy recovery for Mark. Now, it's been two years since uh, Kevin Fian, our chair of the Catholic Charities Board, announced that a new CEO had been selected to lead this agency. And when we gathered here last year, you heard Stephen Caratini. He was midway through his first year at the helm of Catholic Social Services. Stephen came to Catholic Social Services after working in the private sector for 18 years as vice president of a large, publicly traded, multinational corporation and had served in faith-based, faith nonprofit sector since 2003. His experience as Chief Operating Officer for Catholic Charities in Denver and prior experience with Catholic Charities in the Archdiocese of Galveston, Texas made him an excellent candidate to lead CSS and, and know just because he was in Denver and then again in Texas you cannot bring your ri rifle and a bag of weed to the meetings now. But Stephen and his wife Michelle 
who's here with us today as well, have been in Edmonton for just over 18 months, and they've survived their first full winter in Edmonton, which I think just ended last Friday, if I'm correct. They discovered the highs and lows of our local hockey team, the highs meaning we must be talking about the Oil Kings and the lows are the other professional team, and our renowned reviewers of Edmonton's dining establishments. If you really want something better than a Google review, talk to Michelle and Stephen. Actively involved in parish life here at St. Stephen's College, Michelle and Stephen have embraced their new home and commu uh, community. I'd ask you to welcome Stephen Caratini. Good morning. It's so good to be here with all of you once again. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Thank you, Joe, for your kind introduction and for agreeing to be our MC for our annual meeting. I have to share that when I spoke with Joe earlier this week, he told me that he may not be as funny as his brother Tim, but on the plus side, he is much better looking than him. <laughs> and I think by the end of today's proceedings, we will all agree with him on both points. <laughs> this is being taped, that's right. To Archbishop Smith, Archbishop McNeil, Bishop Bittman, to all of the clergy and religious brothers and sisters, to Mr. Kevin Feehan, Ms. Gloria McKee, Mr. Terry Harris, to all of my colleagues at Catholic Social Services and Catholic Charities, and to all of you, our distinguished guests, it is my profound privilege and blessing to welcome you to the 52nd Annual Meeting of Catholic Social Services. I want to extend a very warm welcome to our benefactors representing the Government of Alberta, and in particular the Ministry of Human Services, the Government of Canada, and the City of Edmonton. It is with their support that Catholic Social Services is able to touch the lives of thousands of vulnerable Albertans each year. I also want to recognize Ms. Carol Anktel McAllison, who led our, an our Sign of Hope campaign in 2013, and I would like to introduce to you our courageous Sign of Hope campaign chair for this year, Ms. Beth Allard Clough. Thank you for both for being here today. I did speak with Mark earlier this morning and I am honored and pleased to bring his greetings to you from him. He wanted me to thank you for your prayers and he is indeed with us today in spirit. We have much to share and celebrate with you. I also have to add that we are blessed to be able to acknowledge three very special people in the room who are celebrating significant milestones in their lives. Now, I did not know this before, but apparently when an archbishop turns 90, the entire year is dedicated to celebrating his birthday. I think this is the fifth celebration of, of your birthday, Your Grace, uh, and that is only fitting. Archbishop McNeil has been a source of great inspiration uh, to our agency and remain so today. So please join me in wishing him, congratulating him and wishing him a happy birthday. There are two other people here, a couple who have been great and loyal supporters of Catholic Social Services for many years, even going so far as to give up one of their children to our agency. We would have taken a check, but, uh, but it, it, it's worked out for us so far. Uh, today they are celebrating their 60th, that's 6 zero, wedding anniversary. In a world that too often disdains the notion of, lifetime, of a lifetime of commitment and sacrificial love, we are grateful for the example that Don and B. Salmon are for us all. So if Don and B. you would stand so that we could <laughs> congratulate you on the occasion of your wedding anniversary. You will all be hearing from their lovely daughter, Michelle, uh, in, in, uh, later in our program. Once again, thank you all for being here with us today. We have a wonderful program planned for you, and please enjoy your lunch. Thank you for those greetings, Stephen. We also want to thank some very important people here today that have helped to uh, uh, sponsor today's lunch and meetings. There is, uh, on your agenda card, you'll see the three major sponsors for the annual meeting. There's Elta Fab Structures, uh, Mercier and Mercier Group at National Bank Financial. I believe Bruno is here at table seven. There he is, thank you very much, Bruno. And McClellan Ross LLP, Teresa Okowski's law firm, who 
Although I'm not at that firm, I am going to be there for a meeting tomorrow, and given the lunch here, I'm expecting even a better breakfast tomorrow. So please, enjoy your lunch. Now, any of you that are now binge TV watching on Netflix know of the, uh, the series House of Cards. It's taken public office to a whole new level. Our elected government officials and those serving in public offices have now become the new rock stars because of that. If you are watching that sort of thing, though, you might be wanting to tweet Father Mike right now for a little online absolution. <laughs> But I couldn't keep a straight face with that because Kevin Spacey could not even make those jobs sometimes as good as they are. As many of you know, taking these sorts of offices, uh, administering uh, the, uh, the government, helping out in our systems, it takes a lot of time, stress and energy. But we're thankfully, we're blessed enough to have many of those who have stepped up and are stepping up to take the duties uh, under their wings. We wish to recognize some of those that were able to make it here with us tonight. James Rajad, MP for Edmonton Leduc, is here with us today. James. Lori Blakeman, MLA for Edmonton Centre. At her same table, she's sitting with the Honourable Douglas Roach, OC, Order of Canada, as well as the former Chief Justice of the Court of Queen's Bench, Alan Wachowicz, QC. Both are former uh, Irwin Award winners. Thank you, gentlemen. From Edmonton Catholic Schools, we're pleased to have Trustee Marilyn Bergstra, Trustee Debbie Engel, Trustee Patricia Grell, and Superintendent Joan Carr. From the Greater St. Albert Catholic School Division, Trustee Dave Caron and Superintendent David Kiohaney. David, are you here? Elk Island Catholic School Division Superintendent Michael Hopman. And he is also here. Alberta Catholic School Trustees, Executive Director Dean Sarnicki. And from Covenant Health, the Senior Operating Officer Scott Berg. Thank you all for taking the time to make, uh, make it here with us today. Now there's always a time during a function such as this when there are certain talents and needs that are required that an MC such as myself just can't deliver. Yes, you guessed it, they need some class up here now. And our next speaker has more than enough to make up for me. I would invite the past chair of Catholic Social Services, Gloria McKee, to please bring greetings from the board and to introduce our keynote speaker. Gloria, thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. On behalf of the Catholic Social Services Board of Directors, I too would like to welcome all of you here today. Um, friends, the whole room. Um, and in particular, I would like to welcome and acknowledge the wonderful, wonderful staff of Catholic Social Services. Uh, we have many here today, and um, they, they, they do the work, folks. Um, and uh, they're wonderful, wonderful people. It's been, it's been a pleasure for me to meet all of the folks I've had the, the opportunity to, to work with over the last couple years. And uh, so to the staff and to, um, to the volunteers, if I could just acknowledge those wonderful, wonderful folks. Okay. Now I have the wonderful um, privilege of introducing our guest speaker for today. Um, Richard W. Smith was born in Halifax, Nova Scotia on April 28, 1959. Actually, when I reflected on that last night and I did a little bit of the math, I was kind of depressed a little bit, thinking, oh my, this man I'm not sure was even born when we had our first CSS luncheon. Um, Archbishop Smith's coat of arms illustrates a little bit about his heritage. Uh, it has a shamrock which refers to his maternal Irish ancestry and a rose which refers to his paternal English ancestry. Archbishop Smith studied at St. Mary's University and at the Atlantic School of Theology in Halifax. He later obtained a doctorate in 1998 um, and before that had been uh, ordained to the priesthood in 1987. 
After several fruitful years of ministry in the Archdiocese of Halifax, he was appointed Bishop of Pembroke in 2002. In 2007, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him to the Metropolitan See of Edmonton, and Archbishop Richard Smith was formally installed as the seventh Archbishop of Edmonton on Tuesday, May 1st, 2007, Feast of St. Joseph the Worker. Archbishop Smith serves as president of the Catholic Bishops of Alberta and the Northwest Territories, and he is past president of the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops, which was a very, very big job and uh, entailed tons of travel, and we're, we're pleased to have you back a little more this year now that you're not in that role. He serves, too, as honorary chairperson of the boards of Catholic Charities and Catholic Social Services, and is committed to supporting the agency and giving witness to our call to be a sign of God's love and compassion in the world. On a more personal note, um, I have learned that Archbishop Smith is, loves golf, is an avid golfer, and um, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe when you, when you get up here, Archbishop, if you'd care to tell us a little bit about your handicap and maybe one of your last golf games, apparently with one of your pastors who you had a game of golf with, uh, an elderly gentleman. Maybe you could share a little bit about how that game turned out, or not. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Archbishop Richard Smith. <laughs> 